Mark Cuban is being sued for an investment he calls as close to risk-free as you're gonna get in crypto right before it all crashed. I'm not trying here to tell you it's 100% risk-free, but it's as close, close to risk-free as you're gonna get in the crypto universe. Create an account using the promotional code, code MAVS100. Well, that didn't turn out so well. It turns out now you can use code sue the Mavs at checkout to recoup your money. Now, is this a sure thing? No, but it's as close to a sure thing as you're gonna get in the world of suing billionaires. Because fast forward several months after the Mavs jumped into this investment opportunity, the almost risk-free company Voyager declared bankruptcy and froze everyone's money. More pain in the world of crypto. Voyager Digital files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection just days after the broker suspended withdrawals on the platform. Now, I reported on this a few months ago, how Voyager disguised itself as a low-risk business and used misleading marketing to make incredibly dumb lending decisions that some people would call doing a 2008. Now, because of that, a class action lawsuit has just been filed against Voyager and Mark Cuban. It claims that they both promoted a Ponzi scheme that cost a lot of people money. So today we're gonna dive into this lawsuit to figure out what's going on. So to begin, the first thing you need to know about this story is that this is actually the second class action lawsuit against Voyager. The first one happened almost a year ago. It's called the Cassidy lawsuit. The main allegation in this lawsuit is that it accuses Voyager of lying, which I know is a bit like accusing Ezra Miller of a felony. It's about as unsurprising as the sunrise, but plaintiffs accused Voyager of lying about claims of 100% commission-free trading. Voyager advertised that when you buy Bitcoin or Ethereum, there's no fees to do so, which obviously sounds very attractive until you realize that Voyager makes millions of dollars in fees despite having no fees. So how is that possible? Well, they make money on something called the spread. This is the difference in price of when you buy and sell. And this is how a lot of free brokers essentially work. Except in the case of Voyager, they had told people that they had a special technology saving them even more money called the smart order router. According to their marketing, it identifies inefficiencies in the crypto market, which it then uses to quote, get you a better price on your trades, which all meant according to Voyager, they only make money when you save money. Unfortunately, this wasn't true. Allegedly, Voyager charges their users the highest premium on trades across all competitors. And quote, on all but one occasion, Voyager's prices were worse than whichever exchange they were compared to. So the only person this smart order router was working for was really Voyager. And in hindsight, it's not exactly surprising that Voyager was making money off trading fees, but it's how brazen they were about lying about it that was the problem. Voyager repeatedly advertised things like getting you the quote, most Bitcoin for your buck with images of Voyager checking multiple exchanges for pricing, but this is allegedly false. And that's what lawsuit one is about. Voyager lied, people died. Okay, well, people didn't die. People paid millions more than they had to. But then next came the bankruptcy of Voyager, which we know a lot about. Their lending team basically acted like degenerates on Wall Street bets and lost everyone's money on high-risk loans. And that all brings us up to today. Lawsuit number two with our boy, Mark Cuban. The lawsuit basically says, hey, people lost millions, maybe billions of dollars because you said this was all close to risk-free and it clearly wasn't. Now the plaintiffs are suing to recoup losses they claim are up to $5 billion, which I know sounds like a lot. Um, I'm guessing this is so that they can negotiate later and maybe get a fraction of that in some kind of a settlement. But while there are a lot of things in this lawsuit that are similar to the first one, there are a few new things worth talking about. Firstly, it came out in discovery that Cuban actually knew about the first lawsuit, the Cassidy one. And apparently he even was worried about it or wondered if he should be worried about it. Allegedly, he contacted the CEO, Stephen Ehrlich, about it and clearly never communicated any of that or the risk to his fans. And the other big thing in this lawsuit is that it accuses Cuban and Stephen Ehrlich of running a Ponzi scheme where basically they were uh, kept bringing in new people to pay for the other people until it all imploded. Now, I'll leave it to you guys to decide whether this was all a Ponzi scheme or not. But what I know is true is that Voyager definitely misled people, all the while claiming to be transparent and looking out for the customer, which to me is about as bad as it gets. And so we're trying to make sure that we're so transparent about this. And transparency is really what, what leads us to being trying to build, you know, uh, the next generation of financial services company. 
is by being transparent about it. I'm sure if, if like cred, if it was quarterly financials, you know, some of the things that they're talking about might have gotten caught earlier. So we, it's important to us. So yeah, it turns out they weren't transparent at all. And not only that, they used one of the most respected businessmen in the world to push their misleading claims onto millions. This is especially ironic given how Cuban talks about how the goal of this partnership is education and financial literacy. It's the education that we want to bring. To bring education. The education. The education. Education. Teach the youth about financial literacy. Financial literacy. Financial literacy. Financial literacy. Well, I guess it is fair to say that investors got an education, just probably not the one Mark Cuban was talking about. The whole irony here is that Cuban is always pushing the same trash that he's ranting against. Like on the one hand, he'll call metaverse real estate the dumbest ever, which to be fair, might be true. But then on the other hand, he turns around and gets caught in scam after scam. And at some point you have to ask yourself, when does he become responsible for what he says? Especially when he's one of the most recognizable businessmen on the planet, thanks to Shark Tank. I mean, when Mark Cuban speaks for better or worse, and he is a terrible crypto investor, people still listen. So it's sad when he says things like this. There's a lot of ways to inexpensively start to get an understanding. And it's a lot easier than even opening up a, a savings account. It's a pain in the ass to open up a savings account, particularly for your kids these days. There's so much paperwork. And, you know, whether it's yourself personally, someone you're trying to teach, your, um, you're trying to teach your kids about personal finance. Believe it or not, this is actually a better way. And so that's one of the unique opportunities and why it's not too late. That's right. Why fill out all that boring paperwork at a bank when you can lose all your money instead for a valuable lesson in personal finance? Of course, I'm hoping that if the fans actually win this lawsuit, it's a lesson in personal finance that Mark Cuban won't forget either. Are you serious? 